Hello and welcome. In the last video, we had a discussion about the concept of an adapter. In today's video, I will be talking about how we can define the transaction class for our DUT, which consists of a single register, and this register has a single field F0. And the size of this register is 8 bit. This DUT has some number of inputs and single output. So we'll try to write the transaction class for this DUT. Then we'll try to understand the agent class, which typically here consists of a sequencer and driver. So we are not uh, considering a monitor over here because we want to understand how that auto prediction will help us. When we will discuss the explicit prediction, at that time we will consider a monitor in the agent. Okay, so right now our agent consists of a single sequencer and a single drive. Then we'll try to understand how to define a register sequence. Okay. So as a part of today's video, I will be talking about the transaction class, the agent class, and the register sequence for our this you know DUT. Okay, let me show you the code directly. So as you can see on the screen, as you know, the transaction class is used to keep the track of all the inputs and outputs of our DU. So class transaction, which is extending from UVM sequence item, we have to define all the inputs and outputs over here. Here I'm using factory registration in field macros for all the inputs and outputs. And as it is an object class in the UVM based class hierarchy, its default constructor expecting one of end class transaction. Now the next class is a driver class. So as you know, the responsibility of the driver class is to drive the stimulus to the DUT through virtual interface. So as you can see, class driver, which is extending from UVM driver, and it is a parameterized class. The virtual interface, we have to define the interface as a virtual virtual DUT interface, the interface name and the instance is VIM. As it is a component class in the UVM base class hierarchy, we have to register it with the UVM component details factory registration micro and its default constructor expecting two arguments. Okay. Now in the build phase, just we are creating the object for REQ which is an inbuilt object of a transaction class using factory create method and just we are getting the interface using get method over here using UVM config if you are aware about this as our DUT has a reset so for that just we are writing a simple DUT reset logic so task reset DUT we are waiting for one clock cycle and here we are applying the reset using virtual interface so vif dot reset using non blocking assignment reset is equal to and when reset is equal to one we are keeping all the inputs <laughs> to default value like zero then we are waiting for two clock cycles and just printing the message like system reset and after that we are remo removing the reset by giving zero value to and end task reset D. now the task drive in which we are driving the stimulus to the DUT. We are waiting for one clock cycle, then we are applying reset is equal to zero meaning removing the reset and then we are applying the write enable and address signals using non-blocking assignment. Here we are checking the condition that if write enable is one, at that time we are applying the input D to the DUT using virtual interface. So then we are repeating for two clock cycles and just creating that write data. Okay, vif dot d. Else meaning if the write enable is zero, then we are again waiting for two clock cycles, and then we are capturing the output using blocking assignment. So request dot d out is equal to vif dot d, and just printing like data read using info message vif dot d out. 
now the run phase which is the main phase for us here we are using forever begin below in that we are using the sequence item code dot get next item within parenthesis the transaction class object and here we are calling that drive you know task and just sequence item code dot item end task run phase end class driver very soon now the next class is an agent class as you know the agent is just a container for the sequence driver and monitor and right right now we are not considering monitor just we are considering driver and monitor uh, driver and sequence okay so class agent our own name which is extending from uvm agent as it is an component class in the uvm base class hierarchy we have to register this class with the uvm component details and its default constructor expecting to arguments here as a part of this agent we have to de uh, define the instances of driver and sequencer so here we are using in build a uvm sequence and which is a parameterized so remember in uvm sequencer and driver and sequence are the parameterized classes then in the build phase just we are creating the instances for uh, you know allocating a memory for driver and sequencer class instance using factory create method and then in the connect phase we are making the connection of a driver and sequencer so if you see this diagram driver has port whereas the sequencer has this export so this connection we have to make in the connect phase of so this driver dot sequence item port dot connect method within parenthesis sequence or object dot sequence item export end function connect phase very simple end class agent now register class already we had discussed in the last video register block already we discussed now let me show you interesting one which is a uh, register sequence so the assignment for you guys is to uh, you know analyze this register sequence and our bus sequence and try to find the differences between them okay so register class which is a uh, register sequence class which is extending from uvm sequence and as it is an object class its default constructor expecting one item so remember as a part of rel all the classes are the object element here we have to define the instance of a register block okay then in the body task body we have to define a field status which is of type uvm status e to store the state of a transaction you know status of a transaction now we have to define two variables called desired value variable and mirrored value variable and the size should be uh, should be same as our dut hardware register so as you know hardware register size is of 8 bit so we have to define 7 down to 0 desired value and mirrored value variable same size now let me show you some methods already we had a discussion about this set and get method right so if you see the literature you will find this set method is used to set the desired value of the register with you know hardware not a hardware register just a register model desired value is used to set okay. so you can see set the desired value of the field in the register to the specified value it will does not set in the hardware register of in the design so if you see the syntax for this here itself you will find we have to define the value set method and we have to define the value which we want to write in the desired value variable of our register let me show you the code for that set method is like register block instance dot register instance dot set and within parenthesis we will, we have to provide a value so i am providing 10 so this 10 will be there in the desired value variable remember this set method is used to update the desired variable of a register model not the mirrored value so after setting 10 value if we uh, try to get that value in the desired value variable you will find it will be 10 but if we are getting the get if you are getting the mirrored value variable using get mirrored value it will be zero because the set method is used to set the desired variable of a register model let me show you the syntax for a get so this get is used to return the desired value of the register it will does not actually read the value of a register of the hardware register just a desired value whatever we are setting of the register model it will you know 
return that get mirrored value is used to return the mirrored value failed in the hardware okay. let me show you the code so here this we have understood this get method and get mirrored value right get mirrored value so after a set method if we are printing the mirrored value desired value so after setting we will find that this desired value variable will be 10 whereas the get mirrored value will be 0 okay this mirrored value will be 0 because this set is used to set the desired variable of a register mode after doing the write method okay if you see here you will find the write method we have to provide the arguments like status and the value which we want to write into the hardware is so this write method is used to write into the hardware register write value into the duty register that whatever we are providing in the value so let me show you the syntax over here so register block instance dot register instance dot write within parenthesis the status comma the value which we want to write into the hardware register and after that after write method if we are printing the desired value variable and mirrored value variable you'll we'll find both will be updated with this five after write method, if we are printing desired value variable and mirrored value variable, we'll find both will be updated to five. So this is what you know simple uh, you know methods for set, get, and get uh, mirrored value, and the write method. So here just end task body end class register sequence. Let me just to show you the output of this set get get mirrored value and a write method. In the next video, we'll try to run the actual code because the integration part is remaining right. So as you can see, the initial value, if you want to read, you know, that initial value will be zero for say, uh, desired value variable and mirrored value variable. So for example, if we want to check the default value here, initial value, we are just uh, using the desired value variable is equal to the get value, right? Get method. So register block dot register instance dot get and get mirrored value into this mirrored value so initial value will be uh, zero right and after the set method you will find it will use to set the desired value variable so you'll find the desired value variable will be 10 and mirrored value variable will be zero after doing write method you can see over here you'll find the desired value will be 5 and mirror value will be 5 any transaction on the DUT will update the desired and mirror Okay, and you'll find the message like write data write r uh, wr data is equal to 5 from the driver info. Okay. So this is what a simple explanation of the transaction class, how we can define a transaction class for our DUT which consists of a single register. How to define the agent class which consists of a sequencer and driver here, yeah. and how to define a register sequence. And we understood that uh, uh, that that uh, methods right set get get mirrored value and the right method. In the next video, I will show you the integration part, and in that video, we'll try to run the code and we'll try to explore more about the methods. So with this, I hope you have understood the transaction class, agent class, how to write a register sequence. Now the assignment for you is to uh, I will uh, you know I will put a link of this. Uh, code in the description go and analyze the register sequence and compare with uh, it with the bus sequence normal bus sequence and what are the differences you are finding you can put those differences in the comment section okay. and we'll try to see uh, all the practical example don't worry in the next video the integration we'll try to do and then we'll run the code to understand all methods, the front door methods, uh, you know, this front door methods, uh, front door as well as the back door method. So this right we understood now. We'll try to understand all these methods with the help of Excel. Okay. So now uh, I hope you understood the things, the concepts we discussed in today's video, and also I hope you enjoyed this video. So thanks for watching. Thank you.